Lab Boys and Girls. Today we're going to be learning about ordering fractions. So there's a few things you need to remember as soon as you look at a, at a problem to see what steps you need to take first. If the denominator is the same in all of the fractions, then all you need to do is look at the numerators and order them depending on however they tell you to order them. But if the denominators are different, you need to do a few extra steps first. You need to create equivalent fractions and then you can order them based on the numbers in the numerator. So let's take a look at some examples. Example number one, we have two-thirds, three-thirds, and one-third. What you notice about these fractions is they all have the same denominator. So we're only going to be focused on the numerator. My problem tells me to order the fractions from least to greatest. So I need to be looking for the smallest numerator that I see. So out of 2, 3, and 1, the smallest number would be the 1, which makes 1 third the smallest fraction. Then I would look for the next one, and the 2 would come next, which makes 2 thirds. And finally, the 3, which makes 3 thirds my greatest fraction. So to order these fractions from least to greatest, I would have 1 third, 2 thirds, and 3 thirds. Seems pretty simple when the denominator is the same. However, you will be seeing a lot of problems like this. 1 fourth, 1 half, and 1 fifth. How do we order them when the denominators are different? Well, you need to create equivalent fractions first. And that takes a little time and a little work, a little bit of work. First, you need to rewrite your fractions. And as we've done in previous lessons, you need to be looking at the denominators and focus on those numbers. Our goal is to find a denominator that we can use for all of those fractions that's exactly the same. And the way we find that is by listing out each of the times tables for each denominator and finding the, a number that they have in common. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to list my four times table. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. I'm going to go ahead and list my two times table. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And my five times table. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I then need to search all of my multiples for each of the denominators to find the first number that they have in common. So for this set of numbers, it looks like the very first number they share, all three of them share, is 20. So 20 is going to become my new denominator for all three fractions. All right, then I need to use my equivalent fraction skills to create the numerators for each of those fractions. And I do that by multiplying. I ask myself, how does 5 become 20? Well, 5 times 4 equals 20. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator as well. So I must also multiply my numerator by 4. And 1 times 4 equals 4. Same thing over here. I ask myself, how do I get from 2 to 20? I multiply by 10. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So 1 times 10 equals 10. And finally, how do I get from 4 to 20? I multiply by 5. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. 1 times 5 equals 5. So now instead of 1 fourth, I have 5 twentieths. Instead of 1 half, I have 10 twentieths. And instead of 1 fifth, I have 4 twentieths. Now I'm able to order those numbers from least to greatest. So out of these numbers, my smallest numerator is the 4, which tells me that 1 fifth is the smallest fraction. After that, my next smallest numerator would be the 5, which tells me that 1 fourth would come next. And finally, my 10, which tells me that 1 half would be the greatest fraction. All right, so that, was, that would be how you would solve a problem where the denominators are different. Let's try one more example before I set you off to try your practice problems. 
we have three eighths, two thirds, and three fourths. Now we're trying to create equivalent fractions where the denominators are all the same. So we're going to go ahead and list the eight times table. Eight. 16, 24, 32. The three times table, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and the four times table, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Then we search our multiples to try to find the first number that all three have in common. And it looks as if 24 is the first number that every single denominator has in common. So 24 is going to become my new denominator. Now I create my equivalent fractions. I ask myself, how do I get from 8 to 24? Well, we multiply by 3. Whatever I do to one number, I must do to the other. So 3 times 3 equals 9. How do I get from 3 to 24? I multiply by 8. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. And 2 times 8 is 16. And how do I get from 4 to 24? I multiply by 6, do the same to the top, and get 18. So now instead of 3 eighths, I have 9 24ths. Instead of 2 thirds, I have 16 24ths. And instead of 3 fourths, I have 18 24ths. My denominators are now all the same and I can just focus on my numerators. My problem asked me to order from least to greatest, so I search for my smallest numerator, which is the nine. And that tells me that 3 eighths is the smallest fraction. After that, it looks as if my next smallest is 2 thirds, which is the 16 as the numerator. So that tells me 2 thirds comes next. And finally, my 18 as the numerator, which tells me that 3 fourths comes last. All right, it is time for you to practice some problems on your own. Please do these in box number three of your homework sheet. We have 3 eighths, 3 sixths, and 3 tenths, 5 ninths, 5 sixths, and 1 third, and 2 sevenths, 3 sevenths, and 1 seventh. Please make sure that you are taking your time and staying organized so that you can see the relationship between your fractions and the directions ask you to order from least to greatest. And for box number four, I would like you to create three of your own fractions and order them from least to greatest as well. Boys and girls, if you still have questions or comments or strategies, please be sure to put them in box number four of your homework sheet and we'll discuss them in class tomorrow. You've been flipped with Mrs. Monopoly.